Hi, in this video we will train a neural network to make predictions about words and their neighboring words and use this information to derive numerical representations that approximate the meaning of words, that is, the so-called word embeddings. In the previous video we defined and compiled a neural network that we stored under the variable embedding underscore model which we now proceed to train using the data that we prepared in another previous video. To do this we use the fit method of a Keras model object stored under the variable embedding underscore model. As you may remember from the previous video we have two matrices, one called targets and the other one called context, which contain one hot encoded vectors for the target and context words. And given a target word, we try to predict the context word. And we provide these matrices to the arguments X and Y, which correspond to the inputs and outputs. The inputs in this context refer to the inputs provided to the neural network, whereas the outputs refer to the predictions that the neural network should learn to make. The batch size argument defines how many pairs of target and context words the network processes at the same time before making an estimate of the error in predictions and adjusting the weights of the network. The epochs argument defines how many times we loop over the data provided to arguments x and y, and in this case we loop over the data 1500 times. Now that we have trained a network we can use it to make predictions about the context words of a target word. For example, to predict the lemmas of the words that occur close to the lemma b, we need to start by fetching the one-hot encoded vector from the dictionary under lemma underscore vectors. We then use the expand underscore dims function from the numpy library to add a so-called dummy axis in front of the vector because the neural network expects to receive the data in batches. So in this case, if you look at the shape, we have a single vector with 23 dimensions that we then input to the network. We then provide this vector to the model using the predict method, which returns an array of probabilities from the softmax activation function. And we store these probabilities under the variable prediction and then examine the output. This gives us a vector of 23 values that correspond to the 23 lemmas in our vocabulary. In other words, each number in this list corresponds to a probability associated with a given lemma. To examine which lemma is most likely to co-occur with the lemma b, we can use NumPy's argmax function to retrieve the highest value in this vector. This gives us an integer which we can use to index the list of unique lemmas that we prepared in the previous video. And if we use this integer to index the unique underscore lemmas list, then what we get back is the lemma the. And this, according to the network, is the most likely lemma to co-occur with the lemma b. And now comes the most interesting part of this effort. Actually, learning to predict the neighboring words is not the ultimate goal of the training procedure. This is simply a proxy for the true objective, that is, to learn useful numerical representations for individual words. If you really think about it, predicting a word that co-occurs with another is an incredibly difficult task because there will quite often be several alternatives to choose from. However, to make an educated guess, the network must learn useful representations for the target lemmas. And these representations can be acquired from the hidden layer of the neural network which you may remember contains two neurons. 
you may also remember that each of these neurons is connected to each of the neurons in the output layer. So based on these two values from the two neurons, the network must make a prediction about the neighboring lemma. The idea behind word embeddings is that instead of using one hot encoded vectors to represent the identity of a given word, we can use the values of the neurons in the hidden layer, which in our case amount to two. This number is of course arbitrary, so in real life scenarios one might learn for example 300 dimensional representations for each word. And what is crucial about these representations is that each neuron or dimension encodes some information that the neural network has learned about the word and its use by observing the data. So let's explore this idea by retrieving the values for the neurons in the hidden layer of our network and associating them with the unique lemmas in our vocabulary. We can get the values for the neurons in the hidden layer using the get underscore weights method which returns a list and the weights of the hidden layer can be found under the first item in the list. So if we examine its shape, we can see that we have 23 two-dimensional vectors, one for each lemma in our vocabulary. If we fetch the two-dimensional representations for the first five lemmas, we'll see that each of them consists of two floating point numbers. Unlike the one-hot encoded vectors, in which the information is very sparsely distributed, these representations or vectors may be characterized as dense, because every dimension of the vector encodes some information. You may also remember that the vector defines a point in space, and when we have two dimensions, we can actually visualize this embedding space and see where the individual vectors corresponding to the lemmas are positioned in this space. So what we do in this cell is we use the matplotlib visualization library to draw a plot showing the points in a two-dimensional space. We loop over the dictionary in lemma underscore embeddings, which contains the lemmas as the keys, and the coordinates as values and the coordinates of course refer to the two-dimensional feature vector which we then break into two components and plot in the two-dimensional space and this gives us a representation of the two-dimensional embedding space and as you can see for example the point closest to the point for the verb b is indeed the word the you can also see that the points for words that occur in similar contexts, such as Finland and Estonia, are very close to each other. Of course, if the neural network had a chance to observe more data, thus being exposed to different uses of the lemmas or words, it could build up a better picture of their use as represented by points in the embedding space. And this is why word embeddings are typically trained on massive amounts of data. Thanks for watching. As usual, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.